going to attempt to show you some uh, e textiles, so let's just leave that where it is. So, okay, I'm just trying to get myself organised. Got this is my little demo, which I'm going to show you in a minute. I've half done it, and I'm going to show you just how to finish it off, and, and so, so, so you can see how simple e textiles is. Um, but before we do that, I thought I'd uh, just sort of show you for a few demonstrations and a few bits and pieces we do have. Now, um, for those of you who, who um, haven't really heard about e textiles. It, it, it's something we've been selling for a few years and uh, it's become incredibly popular over the last year or two. Uh, it's a range we're putting quite a bit of effort into and we, we, we anticipate it that we'll be expanding over over the coming months. But uh, let me sort of explain to how it works. This is a this is something called conductive thread. So uh, it looks and feels a bit like a, a cotton or a kind of an embroidery thread. It's actually kind of man-made fibre but then it's 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 plated with a, with a silver particles in a plating process, and this makes the, the thread then conduct. So what we can do, a bit like the, the bit of paint I demonstrated earlier, it allows us to create um, connections between electronic parts in, in textiles designs uh, without the drawbacks if you're trying to achieve that with with wires, because this is this is incredibly flexible. Um, you know, whereas if you're trying to actually you could, you could do it with wires in textiles, but you know those wires would be bulky, and they wouldn't necessarily be. A, it wouldn't give you an elegant design. Um, they may fatigue and break over a period of time, which is something you won't get with this conductive thread. So, yeah. So yeah, this is conductive thread. We sell it on a on a big reel like this, which has got about uh, two hundred yards on. We also do uh, a smaller bobbin, which has got about six meters on, um, and. We, we do kits where you get a couple of meters of thread and it's just enough to, to get off and try. So that's what conductive thread is. Now let's show you uh, an example application of, uh, of, of, of how it can be used or what you can create with it. So here we go. We've got a, a whole load of little bits and pieces here that we've uh, have been created. So let's just start by looking at this one here. I mean, yeah, I'm perfectly shot. So what we've got here is a, a battery holder. Now this is, this is um, some prototype stuff we did a few years ago. So the, the the color of the PCBs and the markings is a bit different from from what we sell, but you know it gives you an idea. I, I think you can understand the, uh, what I'm showing you really. So this is a, a battery holder here that's been sewn in, and the conductive thread has been used to sew between the battery holder um, and an LED. And then at the moment the LED isn't on. And then the reason for that is this circuit isn't complete. What we've used here is a metal presser which was sewn down with the conductive thread, and when we Close the press door, or complete the circuit. The LED comes on. So what's happened is the LED is flow, flowing through the thread from the battery round to the LED, and then back round to the battery again, to complete the circuit. So yeah, that's a, a very simple uh, example circuit of something that you could make. Uh, here's, uh, here's a few other little bits and pieces on here. This is uh, some tilt switches. I'll show you those in a minute. This is uh, some of the more modern parts which we just brought out. So what, what we've been doing over a period of time is, is basically after some feedback from, from people who have used the parts is they preferred the, um, the PCBs to be white because um, on some more see-through fabrics you could actually see, you could see the, uh, the green PCBs. So by making them white they don't really stand out very much. So in focus? Yeah. So, Here's an example of a, a very, very simple circuit that Stephanie's put together for me. Now, um, what we have here is a coin star holder. We have two LEDs. The LEDs have been sewn down um, and, and the battery. So when we put the, the battery in, the LEDs flash. So again, these are, these are connect, connected in parallel to each other. So the electricity is flowing around here through the LEDs and then back to the battery. Uh, now that is actually an example of one of the products we sell. So one of the kits we just to get you started with your little kits, which include, like this, you get the battery, two meters of the thread, um, the coin star holder. We do them in various color flashing IDs, so we do uh, red, yellow, green, and blue. Um, and if those, you get two LEDs. Uh, we also do it with a color changing LED. Now, uh, the color changing LEDs are more expensive, so you only get one LED there in the pack. But yeah, that's literally 
a sewn version of that little kit there. I mean, they're great. They're a couple of pounds just to get you off, off the mark. Uh, and if you've never done any textiles before, it's probably a good way to start. The only thing you probably do need in addition to this, <laughs> to, to a needle is something like some needle nose plies like this. And, and the reason we've got those is that you can see how these have been sewn down. Um, to stop the, the LED falling out, we, uh, we can take an LED and we'll form the leg of the LED into a little little loop. So just as, I mean, this isn't an LED you'd normally use, but just one I've got off the shelf. And literally you can just roll the leg around the pliers just to form a little loop, which will allow you then to, to sew it into place. So that's a, a simple little kit we sell. Um, now these LEDs are obviously quite quite big and bulky. Now that can be a good thing in some designs um, because you may want the LED to stick through or you want to have a larger, more visible LED. But in, in other designs you might want a, a sleeker, uh, sleeker Slim, slim down looking design. So what we do have in it is a, is a service mount LED. Now these come spot on little little panels of ten. You snap the boards out. That, you know, just literally the snap out of this board to make the individual LEDs like this here. Um, now the good thing about these is, as you probably see from this PCB, is they're they're incredibly thin. So if you've got a, a design where you may have a bag or a, or a garment where you want the LED to, to sit very very slim. Uh, these are probably a good choice. So we're available in three colours at the moment. Though we're probably going to have more colours. So they currently have a white, blue, and red. I think this is a blue one. So, what a demo! We we'll have a have a look at that one. I think we we did work yesterday. So I've got some more on here. Give that one to Jeff to have a look at. Now, oh, it's working out. I think there's really um, only a couple of things that can stop them working, but something that can can make them more reliable, uh, and it's quite easy to guard against. Really, is that, um, and I didn't say these ones, is that you rely on the friction. Um, between the thread and the part to create the electrical connection. So if, if you do it just with a single small loop or that loop's not tight, then you may find that you know that the LED comes on sometimes or goes off. You need to make sure they're really, really tight. And one thing you can do as well with that bare paint which we showed you earlier is you could dab that on these connections and when it dries it makes a, a solid reliable connection. Um, so but yeah, this is the same kind of LED here, part of a flashing board. So um, you can see they're quite, quite small. So, uh, and this is all connected through. I won't, I won't read too much, Jeff. It might be the battery's gone flat. Which, yeah, yeah, it has. So, <laughs> so maybe we'll get another battery and we'll just show you that one. But, uh, but yeah, so they're, 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 they're nice. If I can uh, just grab my bag. Yeah. yeah. One of the uh, other things I want to show you on here is, obviously, with this, it's quite a large battery, but the battery will last a long time. If you've got a smaller design, we do do a, a, a miniature quantum holder. You can see the difference in size between these two, um, which is, you know, so if you're trying to do a bracelet or something smaller, you may find that the, small, the miniature uh, quantum holders are the way to go. This product we've got here is it, a bit more advanced. What it's got is a little, there's a little processor on this board here. Um, and what this does is it, it, it allows the IEDs to be flashed in different patterns. At the moment, they're all on. I can press the button again, and they'll all flash on, off, on, off. On off, it's got four, four patterns. The next one is where they all flash in in a sequence. If I press it again, it goes to the fourth pattern, which actually is off. Um, there's no power switch at this point. You don't need to because this is taking virtually no power, um, so you can leave this all the time. So yeah, just cycles through all on, flashing all on, all off, all on, all off, and then a, a random pattern. There we go. So that's a quite neat. And again, just you connect the LED, these little service mount LEDs to the board. The board, when you buy it, comes with a battery, um, the flash unit, and you get the, the two adjoining LEDs. So you get all those bits and pieces. Jeff's got me a fresh battery, so you can. We can oh my days! There we go. See that's on. I think one of the connections are a little bit loose, which is fine. But, but there you go. So you can see that blue LED there. They're quite nice. So. I've got a little bit off piece here. So yeah, we've got the coin cell holders, um, 
that you've seen. We do the miniature one, the standard one. We do little kits. Uh, in addition to that, we do we do a number of switches. Um, so you may want to have uh, the facility to turn the circuit on and off, or you may want it to come on, uh, you know, momentarily when something happens. So we've got three switches. You can choose from really. We've got a push switch. Looks like this. We've got a little push switch on top, so you can have a, uh, you can maybe have a, a doll if you squeezed it, push the switch in, and then you know the LEDs would come on. Maybe it's eyes or some other kind of thing. Why why that switch is being pressed down? But it, the minute you let go, the switch pops back out, uh, and it turns off. So that's a momentary action switch. We also have a a slide switch. Uh, which shown here. So this is something that you would slide from on to off, and it stays in that position. So you may have, um, may want to have uh, a T-shirt or something where the LEDs are off. So the moment that that's in the off position, um, you slide it to on, stays on, and all you know the, the garment stays on. And good thing about these switches is they can be located in a different position to where the, the battery holder itself is located. Um, so that's that. We do actually do a coin star holder with that switch built on. So if you, you don't want to have a separate switch, but you do want to have the facility turn your circuit on and off, you can use the, uh, the coins holder with the integrated switch. Uh, and then we also have a tilt switch. So get this up. It's basically it's a little tilt switch. Inside here is a little ball bearing. Um, when it's angled away from the, 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 the terminals you see on the end, the ball isn't touching them and the circuit is open. As you move it towards it, I think it's a 15 degree tipping angle, the ball rolls down, touches the uh, connections on the end and completes the circuit and will turn on your LEDs or whatever else is connected. That's a little tilt switch. So you could have something whereby, you know, that's inside a, um, a toy, the toy's laying down, the LEDs are off, you lift the toy up and the LEDs come on. And for and, and a tutorial on our website, we've got uh, something called a zippy doll. Uh, which uses a tilt switch in that way. So if you're interested in making something like that, you can go to our website, go to the textile section. Um, is it under tutorials? I can't remember. Yeah, it's going on one day apparently. <laughs> they got forced to forces in to get that one published. Um, yeah, so that's uh, it's already there, isn't it? Some of it's there. I'm sure it's there. Yeah. Yeah. What we're doing is we're making it. Um, at the moment, it was split into two two documents, which you needed to read both, and making it into a simpler tutorial, which is easier to follow. So, um, the other thing I want to show you is these two fabrics. So these are conductive fabrics. So like the thread, these are like a normal material, um, but they they do conduct. So we've got two types. Something called a ripstop. So this is a, a material where there's absolutely no it's flexible fabric. But there's no no giving it. You can't pull it. It won't won't move in either direction at all. It's just quite rigid. Um, so that that's a conductive sheet. Uh, now I've seen people use this for a whole load of different things. Often to to make some kind of switching mechanism. For instance, saw someone who made a a, a bear, and they'd use a, a piece of uh, the conductive fabric on each of the pores. So normally the you know the circuit's open. It's basically the pores then formed a switch whereby you touch the piece of fabric together, completed the circuit, and the LEDs came on. So that's quite a neat way of, of using the fabric. Um, the other fabric we have is uh, is similar, but it's actually stretchy. So it's really, you know, imaginative named conductive fabric stretch. But this is uh, let's see, it's a, it's a bit more flexible, and it's got a, a, a flex to it. So if you've got some kind of garment, I don't know, but yeah, you can imagine this would, would wrap right around like like tights or or something. But you may you may have an application whereby you want something that's stretching. Then this is a, a fabric for you. Really, it stretches in one direction. You can't really see the weave here, but if I put it that way, it doesn't. It gets stretches a bit, but not lots. But if you pull it the other way, it goes a long way. So that's quite. I, mean, I can imagine that's quite useful for for some designs. I don't really know often what people get up to with this kind of thing. They obviously buy it and have their own little. Applications. So, if anyone does do anything interesting with these materials, please let us know, and we can we can add those to our website as, as tutorials. So, I think I've droned on a little bit there on uh, the textiles. But what I thought I'd do last of all is uh, is 
show you how easy it sort of is to sew with. So what I've got here, um, is a circuit that I've kind of kish uh, grammy. Of course, I've got one. Just don't know. Twenty thirty two. Yeah, there's, there's one around. I was just uh, see it, Jeff. Sorry. You can't find things, can you? When you need to. So I'm going to put the battery in when I've finished. But uh, what I've done is I've I've already connected to this LED and sewn from one side to the other. Um, and I'm going to just finish off by sewing from this. I've already connected the thread to the other side of the LED. We'll put the put the battery in, and it should work. <laughs> and in the best. Uh, Best live demo ever, but uh, yeah. So literally, I'm sure you can do a much neater job than, than I'm going to do here. Uh, and also, you can see that you can see the uh, thread through both sides. Now, if you don't want to do that, I've seen people use things like hemming tape and, and that kind of thing to to secure the thread in place with uh, uh, without it being visible on the other side of the fabric. So I'm going to quickly carry on going down. Are we in shop? Yeah. Go down to the LED. Now, I think we're going to cover a little bit more of your textiles this afternoon because there's a question from somebody, from Karen, which we're going to cover after lunch. But if you do have any questions that you want us to, uh, to answer, again, just feel free to send them all through and hopefully we'll get through them all this afternoon. Uh, so literally now I've got to the LED and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this all. Now, one of the benefits of these PCBs we've designed is that the connection points are quite large. So this is a very large needle, um, which makes it easy to, to thread the thread through. Um, but I can still get it through the connection points on the uh, the LEDs and coincer holders. So I'm just going to go around here. Now it's important when you do this that you go through it a number of times, to because like I said, if you're going to get any reliability, it'll be because the, the connection points aren't tight. So I'd recommend going for a good sort of Ten, 10 or more times just to, to make sure that it's uh, tightly in place. So we're nearly there. Just do, a, do one more. Now, normally I would cut this off and, and tie it down, but just to save time, I'm just going to put the needle out of the way, try to stab myself with it. Um, I'm going to put the battery in. I did have out. There it is. And off we go, and there you go. It works. So it's incredibly easy to do. There's only a few things that will, will really stop it working. Um, it's uh, if you put the battery in backwards, well, that's easier to, to sort out. Uh, if you connect the LEDs backwards, they won't work. But these LEDs, uh, you can see, I've got a, probably can't see. It's got quite clear plus and minus indicators, which just have to match up with the, the battery holder. Make sure the connections are tight. The other thing that's important is not to let the um, there's a the piece of thread that comes off the positive side of the battery should never touch the piece of thread that comes off the negative side of the battery. It won't cause you any problems or it's not dangerous. But if I touch that onto that piece of thread, what I've done now is I've shorted the battery out. Um, it doesn't. It's not harming the, uh, the thread in any way. But what it will do is flatten the battery quite quickly, and it'll actually stop the LED coming on. So you just need to make sure that sort of this section of thread never touches this piece. But there you go. So that's a uh, a quick demo on e-textiles. Um, I don't know if we've got time for any more questions, have we? Right, Jeff's going to just do one more question before lunch, um, and then we'll be uh, back with you this afternoon. So let me just move some of these bits out of the way. Okay, well, just before I start answering um, any of those questions, um, it's worth noting that um, the um, e-textiles range is one of the products that we do have. Um, as a free sample. Um, so if you go onto our website, you can pick out, uh, I think it's the choice of colours on there, um, 2702 to 2706 is the, uh, the stock code you need for those. Um, so do go and um, get yourself a, a sample of that. Um, I've had a message in from Les Porter who answered a, uh, a question in earlier, um, who's enjoying the show. Um, and um, he does say he's just about to break for his lunch, which uh, indeed we are too. 
um, and then he's going to be uh, designing his, uh, his pair of flashy, stretchy knickers. So uh, he'll, uh, he'll be off for, uh, for a bit of the, uh, the electro fashion fun. So um, I thought it was worth doing. Um, we've got a, a question that's come in from, from Karen, and it kind of follows on from the e-textile stuff that Kevin's just been talking about. So I thought it was worth squeezing that one in before we, um, before we break for lunch. Um, so Karen asks, we're trying to increase, <coughs> sorry, Karen asks, are we trying to increase our e-textiles range um, for GCSE? And do we have any plans um, for a new range of um, components, um, fiber optic cables, threads, that sort of type of thing? Um, now, we've got a few things in the pipeline, um, but I couldn't guarantee whether all or any of these actually will come to market. We're hopeful that they all will, um, but with, with, with all stuff that's in development, it may or may not do. Um, so I'm just going to talk about a few things that we're in the process of um, working on at the moment. Um, and, and hopefully, um, come the new year, we should have these, these three products available. So, um, the first one that we're, we, we're going to be working on is a, a really simple little board. This is kind of very similar to the um, tilt switch board. I don't know if we can zoom in a little bit to, to see that a little bit better. Uh, kind of similar to the tilt switch board, um, except for this one, when you put a magnet next to it, um, it's going to turn on. Now, what that will do for you, if you had a, uh, a little dog, you could put this inside the dog, you could put the magnet inside the bone, and then you could put the, um, the LEDs in its eyes. When you put the magnet next to this sensor, or the bone next to the dog, um, then the LEDs will light up. So that's something we're, we're working on at the moment. The other one that we want to work on as well um, is a slightly larger board, uh, just, just like the, the, the coin cell power board. Um, and this is going to have a little light sensor on, on the other side to the, the, the power board. And what that will do is it will automatically detect when it goes dark and it will put the power um, to the, the, the connecting points when that happens. So you'll be able to have something that only comes on um, at night. The other product that we're working on as well um, is a, a starter kit, which will be basically some, some pre-cut felt with a design on it and it will show you exactly where to sew. Uh, where to put the, the LEDs and the, the coin cell and what have you. Um, and the current thought on that one is that we're going to do a, a cat where the, uh, the eyes light up. Um, so we've got a few things in the pipeline. Um, as with everything, uh, a lot of our ideas are driven by what people want. Um, so if people do have ideas for e-textiles, um, then we're more than happy to, um, to, to develop them as long as we, you know, we, we think it's, um, it, it's got potential. Um, in terms of fiber optics and electroluminescence and that sort of thing, we, we did used to sell electroluminescent wire, um, and we found that it was quite expensive. We didn't really sell it, um, so that it, it ended up being discontinued. But it is something we could have a look at, and, and also the, um, the fiber optics these days are getting quite cheap, so we can have a look at, at putting those into the range. Um, so hopefully that's something that we, 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 we can do. The question has come in. Um, Katie says, I'm really excited about the uh, possibility of e-textiles. Uh, is it possible to add a larger battery um, if the piece isn't to be worn, um, i.e. would the thread work and, and, and how would we connect that up um, to light more LEDs? And also, can other items such as uh, motion sensors um, be added? Um, so what I'm going to start with is our normal, straightforward, uh, regular um, coin cell um, power board. So um, on this one, what we've got there, there's a really small little board, um, and you've got connections on here to, if it actually comes into focus, uh, you've got connections on here to get the, um, the power out of the board. And this uses a little um, coin cell. It's a, a CR2032 coin cell. Um, and that, that, that's got enough power in it um, to, to drive sort of four or five LEDs. Now what you could do is you could swap that. Um, this is a, a little battery box um, that's got a couple of AA batteries in it. And it does come um, with a, a little on off switch. Now what we'd be able to do with that, uh, because it's got more power in it, would be able to drive um, probably about 50 LEDs um, and it's going to last for about um, seven or eight times longer than the, um, than the, the normal um, coin cell. So one of the things with electrofashion and also with, with other LEDs um, is, is to do with people asking how many uh, LEDs can we drive and uh, how do we connect them up. So whether we're using the small little coin cell board um, or whether we're going to use um, the battery box, it doesn't really matter. If we, if we draw that little battery box in, 
We've got a couple of wires coming off here. If that one's the black, in this case, and that one's the red, what we would do is we'd sew onto that, we'd sew onto that, and then we make a, a, a connection off each of these um, into the LED itself. Now we can either go for um, the, the regular five millimetre LEDs or we can go for the surface mount ones. Uh, if we're going to use those we need to, to bend the legs. So what we do in terms of actually doing this, the stitching, we'd do a, 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 a stitch into there and then we'd stitch another bit of wire out and we go into the next one. And then we've got another LED there. And then on the red wire side, come into here, wrap it around lots and lots of times, and then another one out and go into the next leg. And we can keep doing that as many times as we want into the next LED, back out and on. Um, so like I say, the small um, coin cell um, power board, we can run about four or five of those LEDs. With this battery box, it shouldn't be a problem to run. Uh, about 50 LEDs. So um, the other question was to do with um, what about connecting up a motion sensor. Now we don't have anything to do with this at the moment, um, but we do have um, a, a um, vibration sensor. So uh, on this, I'll just tilt this down so you can see see that again. Um, it is quite quite small. Um, now unfortunately at the moment this isn't mounted onto uh, one of those little nice PCBs um, with the, the um, connecting points on the edge. Um, but I'm just going to prove the, the concepts of what could be done here. Um, so if you excuse the fact that we're using wires instead of thread, uh, this is just because it's obviously much quicker on a, on a live demonstration. What I'm going to do is take the power out of the battery into one side of the vibration sensor um, and then out of the other side of that and then I've got a, um, an LED here, um, which I'm going to connect to uh, the other side. And then I'm going to complete the circuit, going back round and into the battery. So when that's turned on, as that vibrates, I don't know whether we can see that very well on the camera, um, as I'm moving that, waggling it around, the LED is flashing. So what you could do there, if somebody was to be wearing that, um, then every time they move, the LED would light. So um, I think it's, uh, it's quite a nice idea. At the moment, um, it would be a bit fiddly to do, um, but it's certainly something we could look at mounting that onto a, a, a proper board. The, um, the alternative that you could go for at the moment, um, and it, it is currently available, is we do a, um, a little tilt switch. Um, and this is what the, uh, the tilt switch looks like. Again, uh, very small. There's connection points on here, and what that will do um, when it's tipped up, uh, it makes connection, and when it's down, it doesn't. Um, so so that would be a, an option for doing some sensing. So hopefully um, that, that gives you a, a few possibilities. Um, I suspect that, that uh, something like the, the, the motion sensor um, may well be something that we can um, go and look at again um, and, and, and develop as a new product, because I'm sure it will be something that people are interested in doing. Um, I mean, if anybody is interested in that, if you let us know, then um, the more people that ask for something, the, uh, the more likely it is um, that we'll, uh, we'll do it. So um, all it was, um, whilst Kevin's been doing that, uh, Julie Boyd, who um, we happen to know is just down the road in Nottingham, has, has been asking about the, um, the battery box um, that we were talking about a moment ago. And she says, what's the best way to make those um, connections? Um, so this, this isn't the, uh, the most ideal solution. Um, what I, I, I suspect is that if we want to, if, if there's a demand for this sort of higher power unit, we need to make up a little board um, so that you've got the normal thread connections and it's nice and straightforward. Um, but as an interim solution, uh, what you will be able to do, if we can just go down for a, uh, a, a close up, is to um, take take the um, the wires and strip back um, a, a reasonable sort of section um, of the. the yeah, let's get rid of that in bit. There we go. Um, strip back a section of the wire. Uh, if it'll focus, um, then it will be on to a winner again. Um, and then just, just twist all those strands together. And then if we take something like a, a pair of pliers or a, a, a screwdriver, if we wrap that round, what we'll be able to do is to just make up um, a, a, a nice little eyelet, if we can get that into some sort of, um, sort of focus. It's very small. Um, I'm going to zoom in enough. If I can come up, we'll keep in focus. I'm not sure whether whether we can see that, um, but we've got a little eyelet there, and you'd be able to sew the thread to that 
Um, so, okay, it's not a perfect solution, but um, we do have those on the shelf at the moment. So if people did want to do that, then that would be the, uh, the way forward. Um,